Jake Thompson was your average human kid, or so he thought. After winning an intergalactic exchange program, he found himself in a school not just in another country, but on another planet, deep in the Zorblack system, at the prestigious Galactic Academy of Universal Studies. The school boasted students from across the galaxy, species of all shapes, sizes, and gravitational tolerances. Jake figured he'd fit right in. That was before he discovered that the gravity on the Academy's planet, Flopnar 4, was about one-tenth of Earth's gravity. It started innocently enough. On his first day, Jake reached for a school-issued hoverboard. The alien students around him, small, floaty beings with delicate limbs and eyes bigger than their heads, struggled to pick up their own boards with great care using anti-grav gloves. Hey, no big deal, Jake muttered, grabbing his hoverboard casually. He lifted it with one hand, unaware that the rest of the class was staring at him in horror. Did you just croaked a nearby student, his bulbous eyes bulging out even more. Is there a problem? Jake asked, genuinely confused. He's, he's doing it barehanded, hissed another alien student in a voice loud enough to be heard by the whole class. By lunchtime, the rumors had spread like wildfire across campus. The whispers of the human death worlder reached the antennae, tentacles, and gelatinous brain nodes of every species at the school. They say humans are from a world so dangerous they have to be insanely strong to survive. One of them once punched through a moon. I heard they eat rocks and wash it down with liquid fire. Jake had no idea why everyone was so skittish around him. In fact, he was more concerned about the lunch menu that day, green gelatinous cubes that wobbled and smelled like ammonia. He figured he'd stick with his packed lunch, a peanut butter sandwich and a thermos of coffee. Meanwhile, across the cafeteria, alien students were huddled in groups, glancing at Jake, whispering furiously. I heard that on Earth, their oceans are made of acid, and they swim in it for fun. They drink molten lava for breakfast. They communicate through violence. Jake, oblivious to the growing myths around him, finished his coffee and stretched his arms. As he did, a nearby student dropped their food tray and screamed, He's stretching. They're going to attack. Things escalated quickly in gym class when Jake absentmindedly kicked a ball. The ball, which was designed for the low gravity of Flopnar 4, shot off like a rocket, shattering several windows and leaving a burning trail in the sky. The students panicked. The teachers had an emergency meeting. This human, one professor said gravely, is the true meaning of a death worlder. It's not safe for him to stay here. One wrong move and he could destroy us all. But before they could send Jake home, disaster struck. A routine science experiment on the nearby mountain, where the academy ran environmental tests, went horribly wrong. A miscalculation in a harmless bicarbonate reaction caused the entire mountain to froth up like an enraged space kraken, spewing massive bubbles, foam, and what looked suspiciously like baking soda. The academy was thrown into chaos. To the fragile-bodied alien students, the foamy deluge was overwhelming. Evacuate! A teacher screamed as students scrambled to escape the harmless bubbles that were inching closer. Doomed! We're all doomed! Cried another student, crawling through the foam as if it were toxic sludge. In the midst of the chaos, Jake strolled toward the mountain, yawning. He stared at the erupting volcano of foam and gave it a casual poke. He turned to the panicking students and teachers who were screaming and running like the apocalypse had come. Uh, guys, this is just baking soda and vinegar. I used to play with this stuff as a kid. He reached into the foamy pile, grabbed a chunk, and lobbed it like a snowball, hitting one of the teachers squarely in the chest. You can touch it? A student whispered eyes wide with terror. Yeah, it's fine. It's not even hot. This is like elementary school science back home. With that, Jake began casually scooping up students and plopping them down on the ground, out of the foam. He even carried one of the larger professors, who had fainted from fear. The aliens watched, slack-jawed, as Jake cleaned up the disaster with ease. To them, he was wrestling a toxic, world-ending sludge monster. To Jake, it was a Tuesday. 
By the time he was done, the foam was mostly gone, and the students were safe. He dusted his hands off and stretched again, much to the terror of the nearby onlookers. Later that day, the alien faculty and students gathered around Jake in awe as he sat sipping his coffee. What? What is that you're drinking? One of the students finally asked, terrified of the answer. Jake glanced at his thermos, confused. Oh, this? It's just coffee. The crowd gasped. Coffee? Isn't that the lava you death worlders drink? Lava? No, it's just hot. I mean, if you like, I can make a cup for you. Jake started to offer, but several students screamed and backed away. The school council, now humbled and impressed, exchanged looks. Perhaps we were wrong about humans, one of the professors admitted. Maybe, maybe we do need more of these death worlders around, just in case. As Jake finished his coffee, he looked around at the group of wide-eyed aliens, shrugged, and said, You know, you guys really need to chill out. This was fun. The aliens stared at him in disbelief, secretly wondering what other terrifying fun activities humans did on their volatile death trap of a planet. The reputation of Jake the Death Worlder spread even further after the volcano incident, solidifying him as a walking legend among the Galactic Academy. He didn't mean to terrify the entire student body, but his casual human demeanor only made him seem more dangerous. To him, he was just an exchange student trying to figure out intergalactic calculus. To the rest of the school, he was a ticking time bomb of unstoppable power. The next day, Jake was in the school library, flipping through what appeared to be a glowing book made of sentient goo, trying to catch up on Flopnar 4's history. As usual, Students gave him a wide berth, watching with bated breath every time he turned a page. A group of alien students, a mix of glowing blobs and spindly-limbed creatures, huddled at a nearby table, whispering about Jake. They'd never had such a dangerous creature in their midst before. I heard he can stop his own heart and still walk around. Someone told me his bones are made of some unbreakable substance. No, no. Humans have... What do they call it? Adrenaline. It turns them into berserkers. Jake was blissfully unaware of the bizarre myths swirling around him as he casually sipped from his thermos of coffee. One brave student, a jelly-like creature named Blorp, slithered cautiously over to him, quivering with every step. Uh, excuse me, human? Blorp said, voice trembling like gelatin. Jake looked up, giving a friendly smile. Oh, hey, what's up? Blorp flinched at the sheer force of Jake's smile. Uh, well, I was wondering, uh, can I see your, uh, your death juice? Jake blinked. My what? Blorp pointed at the thermos. That, the liquid fire. You consume it like it's nothing. Jake realized they were talking about his coffee again. He chuckled. Oh, this? It's just coffee, man. You sure you want to try it? It's a bit strong. Blorp's eyes widened. Strong? You mean it's, it's a weapon? No, no, it's just a drink. Look, here. Jake unscrewed the cap and handed it to Blorp, who gingerly touched the metal thermos with a wobbling tentacle. The moment Blorp got a whiff of the coffee, he recoiled, his entire jelly body trembling like a shaken bowl of jello. It smells like the core of a sun. Jake laughed. That's the dark roast. Gives it a kick, keeps me alert and ready for action. Blorp slithered away faster than he had ever moved in his life, convinced more than ever that Jake could drink stars. Later, in alien sociology class, Jake was paired with a student named Xyler, a tall insectoid being with six legs and a nervous disposition. They were tasked with creating a presentation on intergalactic coexistence. So, Jake started trying to break the ice, how do you like Flopnar 4? The low gravity's a trip, huh? Xylar twitched nervously, avoiding eye contact. E, yes, well, we're quite used to it. Be, but for someone like, e, you, from a D-death world. Jake sighed. Earth isn't that bad. I mean, sure, we've got earthquakes and hurricanes and wild animals, but nothing like, you know, giant space worms or asteroid storms. Xylar stared. You have hurricanes? Yeah, big storms. 
You know, wind, rain, the usual. The usual, Xylar repeated, antennae drooping in fear. Look, Jake said, leaning forward, I get it. You guys think humans are tough because we come from a planet with some, uh, quirks. But we're not monsters. I'm just like you, trying to figure out how to get through this semester without failing advanced alien geometry. Xyler considered this, her mandibles clicking nervously. I, I suppose, you haven't hurt anyone yet. Exactly, Jake said. No need to be scared of me. I'm just a regular dude who happens to drink what you guys think is lava. At that moment, the classroom's ceiling shook. Everyone froze except Jake, who casually glanced up, thinking it was just some construction. The shaking grew more violent, and the emergency alarms blared. A voice over the intercom announced, Catastrophic asteroid impact incoming. Please remain calm and evacuate to the underground shelters. The room erupted into chaos. Alien students screeched, flailed, and bolted for the exits, their limbs flailing in panic. Xyler was paralyzed with fear, unable to move as her classmates stampeded past. Jake sighed, stood up, and gently grabbed Xyler's arm. Come on, I'll get you out of here. But, but, but the asteroid! We're all going to be crushed! Xylar stammered. Hey, asteroids aren't that bad, Jake said casually, pulling her along. We've had close calls back on Earth. The key is not to panic. Not to panic? Xyler was in awe. Jake was treating an impending asteroid impact like it was a mildly inconvenient rain shower. Outside, the asteroid, a massive hunk of rock, hurtled toward the planet. Jake, still holding Xyler's arm, watched it approach, unimpressed. Welp, he said, stretching his arms as if warming up for a jog. Guess it's time to show you guys some Earth moves. With a mighty leap, enhanced by Flopnar 4's low gravity, Jake launched himself toward the asteroid. The entire student body watched in disbelief as he punched the asteroid. The asteroid split into harmless fragments, which gently drifted down onto the academy grounds like confetti. This world was a playground for Jake. Jake landed back on the ground with a shrug. See? Easy peasy. The silence that followed was deafening. Xyler, still shaking, looked up at Jake, her mandibles quivering. You, you punched an asteroid. Jake rubbed the back of his neck. Yeah, well, it wasn't that big, and it seemed like it was made from loose snow. You should see the meteor showers we get back home. Now those are a problem. From that day on, Jake wasn't just known as a death worlder. He was the asteroid slayer. The Academy built a statue in his honor, depicting him mid-punch, much to Jake's embarrassment. Students began to warm up to him, though always with a mixture of awe and terror. The teachers, while still convinced that he was a walking calamity waiting to happen, couldn't deny his usefulness. By the end of the semester, Jake had officially become the Academy's most famous, and feared, student. And as he sat in the cafeteria one last time before heading back to Earth, sipping his coffee, the school's headmaster approached him. We've decided, the headmaster said solemnly, that perhaps we do need more death worlders like you around. In case, you know, another asteroid shows up, or those pesky volcanoes give us trouble again. Jake grinned, raising his thermos in a mock toast. Just give me a call. I'll bring the coffee and myself, and maybe some things from Earth for show and tell. The headmaster jaw dropped in shock, thinking to himself, if that coffee is just a drink and not a super hot cup of walking death, what else would he bring?